Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy, and in this jQuery tutorial, we're going to be looking at the jQuery uh, click uh, event handler. Now, in previous tutorials, we've looked at clicking a button uh, to produce a result, uh, and also with the paragraphs. Now, you need to bear in mind that uh, you're going, you want to minimize inline scripting completely, really, with jQuery. And jQuery provides easy functionality to allow you to do this. Now the first thing to bear in mind is that we want to take our scripts, um, our declarations where we've actually included our scripts, and actually put these at the bottom, very bottom of our page. And this allows our page content to be loaded before we actually make use of these scripts. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these both here. You can just take um, this one here if you want, but we can take both of them and just put them at the very bottom of our page here. So we can start to write our code in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button. Okay, so the input type is going to be button, and we're going to assign an ID to this button. This is very important. Now I'm just going to call this click, or let's say button. Yeah, button will be fine. Okay, so now we're not actually going to add an on click event in here and then call a function here. We're actually just going to remove this completely and in our jfunk.js file which we've included here we can actually use a handler to handle the clicking of this button so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and just create a div down here that we're going to assign some text to or append some text to uh, using the HTML function in jQuery so I'm just going to call this button feedback so we're going to leave this blank because jQuery is going to handle the insertion of some code or uh, some text into here in jfunk we need to actually set up the handler so to do this we use a dollar sign and our two brackets and we need to reference the object that we want uh, to be clicked which is button or the handler that we want to uh, to look out for the event handle that we want to look out for so that's button hash button now we want to say dot click and then inside of here we can actually create a function that's going to allow us to handle this and this is called a callback function so function we open up our uh, curly bracket and end our curly bracket, and then we can just bring this down a bit. Okay, so simple as that. Now inside here is what's going to happen when the button is clicked. So for example, alert, hello. So let's go back to um, our index.php page. So when this button is clicked with the ID of button, obviously this is the variable name, it can be whatever you choose. When we click the button, we're going to get an alert saying hello. So let's go ahead and test this in our browser. Ah, we didn't give a value to the button. Probably best to do that just quickly. Click me. So let's go back over to our page and click click me. And you can see that we have a page uh, or a dialog box coming up saying hello. So you'll see that we haven't actually specified any on click on this button, but our JavaScript file jfunk.js has actually handled this for us. So now what we could do is we could say hash, uh, sorry, dollar sign, and in here hash button underscore feedback dot HTML, and this function will just insert some data into our div because we've referenced it button feedback. And in here we can just put anything. So button has been clicked, okay? So now we're gonna go back to our page and refresh. When we click this, you can see that we get the text up. So we uh, eliminated the use of inline um, JavaScript completely. We haven't even called a function from this button. We've just used our handler to do so. Now, let's say you had um, uh, a couple of buttons on our page. Let's just go ahead and copy and paste these down. And I'm gonna call this one here, um, say button two and button three. Uh, in actual fact that <laughs> sorry, I've uh, I need to modify the ID rather than the actual type. Sorry, my mistake there. Uh, that's probably a key, a key sort of a tip to name your ID something relatively different to your type, so you don't get confused. Um, okay, so now that we've done that, we have a button uh, or three buttons, and they are called button, button two, and button three. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get uh, the page to show the feedback in this div with whatever button I click on. So if we head over to our um, our page 
and uh, this is the result of me adding these buttons. So now if I was to click on button one, the event handler has been triggered, triggered because we have uh, the first button with reference with a hash there and button. So we've referenced that ID. If we then click the second button, nothing happens, and the third button, nothing happens. So there is a long way you can do this and then a short way. Now the long way would be to copy and paste each of these downwards like this, and then just change this here. However, this is messy and there's too much code. We've replicated code um, three, uh, well, twice from the original. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually reference the element as opposed to the actual ID. So we're gonna say in here, instead of hash button, we're gonna remove the hash and we're gonna say input and then a colon button. And what this will look for is an input field with the ID button. So now what's gonna happen is this uh, event handler is gonna pick up on any button that's pressed and then it's gonna give us our button feedback. Now you might be wondering why would you need such a technique? Well, let's say you had um, any uh, uh, an amount of buttons down your page and you wanted to say log when the button has been clicked or something like that. For example, if you wanted to just log when someone had actually clicked a button, you could then use this. So it's just a general, um, a general means of checking if a button has been pressed. You'll probably find that when you are writing in jQuery, you'll probably find some use for this in the future. Okay, so now we've got button one, we can click on that, we get the result that we've always seen. But now if we click on button two, we get exactly the same result. If we refresh again, click button three, we get that again. So as you can see, we've eliminated the need for inline JavaScript completely, and we've just allowed jQuery to pick up on these events.